Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to crochet this short sleeved summer cardigan. I designed this cardigan with comfort in mind. It's crocheted with spore weight yarn, making it the perfect lightweight layering piece and it fits oversized, which allows for easy movement and adds a relaxed feel to your outfit. Feel free to customize the length too. I think this cardigan will look super cute short and you'll use a lot less yarn. So if you're new to crocheting clothing or just want an uncomplicated design to follow, then I think you'll love this pattern. The cardigan is worked flat with one large back panel and two front panels that grow slightly towards the center from top to bottom to give it a cozy shawl-like feel. And because the stitch used is reversible, both front panels are crocheted exactly the same. Once the panels are joined together at the sides, the sleeves are crocheted using simple half double crochets worked in the round. And finally, to complete the look, we create a half double crochet border along the bottom of the cardigan and around the collar. Before we dive in, let's go over the materials required for this project. I've listed the materials as well as the link to the free pattern in the video description below. Since my website is supported by ads, I've also linked to the ad-free PDF file that you can purchase on Ravelry and through my online store. So you'll need sport weight yarn. I used Mila Mia Naturally Soft Merino in the color Midnight. You'll also need a size F5 or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a measuring tape to measure the length, and a tapestry or yarn needle for weaving in ends. You're also going to need to know a few crochet basics. So to keep this video simple and quick, I'm going to assume that you already know how to make a slip knot, how to work a chain stitch, a single crochet, and a half double crochet. Okay, let's dive in. We're going to create the back panel and two front panels with a simple stitch that alternates half double crochet and chain stitches. So we begin by chaining the required number of chains for the cardigan size that we're making. And you can refer to the pattern linked to in the description for your size. I made my cardigan to fit a size extra small to medium, which means that the foundation chain is 161 chains for the back panel and 75 chains for each of the front panels. So once you've completed your foundation chain, you're ready to start row one. For row one, we work one half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. I like to work into the bumpy part of the chain uh, because I find it's easier when we c come around and work the border. Um, and I also think the ends look prettier or the edges look prettier that way, but it's up to you. So after you've completed your first half double crochet, you can chain one and skip the next chain and then half double crochet in the chain after that. So we're alternating half double crochets and chains, and when we work our chains, we're skipping the chain beneath it. So it's kind of creating like a little hole in between the half double crochets. When you reach the end of the row, the last half double crochet stitch will be in the last chain. Turn your work and begin row two. For row two, we chain two and this counts as our first half double crochet and then work another half double crochet in the first chain one space. And then we continue to repeat alternating chains and half double crochets by chaining one and then half double crocheting in the next chain one space. So we just repeat this all the way to the end of the row 
And if we do it right, our last half double crochet will be in the last half double crochet of the row. Turn your work and repeat row two. So this row will be repeated for the entire back panel. It doesn't get much easier than that, right? And the front panels are made with the same stitch as well, but with a slight modification. As each row progresses, the panels gradually widen by adding an extra chain one and half double crochet at the end of every fourth row. I'll show you how to make the increases as well. So please don't worry if this sounds complicated. The panels will also be completely identical since the fabric is reversible. So this will also help simplify things. Go ahead and finish making your rectangular back panel by repeating row two until you reach the required length. And then I'll show you how to crochet the front panels. The front panels are just a bit narrower than half of the width of the back panel. And for the first 14 rows, we're just repeating row two. So it's exactly like the back panel. But at the end of row 15, that's where the increases begin. So we'll be increasing by a chain one and a half double crochet at the end of every fourth row. So row 15 is where we'll make the increase. And then we'll just work three more rows exactly the same as row two with no increases at the end. Okay, here we are at the last stitch of row 15. Make a half double crochet in the last stitch, but instead of turning and beginning another row, chain one and half double crochet again in the same stitch. That's it. The increase has been made, and now the next three rows, row 16 to 18, are just going to be repeats of row two. So we just repeat rows 15 to 18 until our front panel is the same length as the back panel. This is what your front panel should look like. You can see the extra stitches at the end of every fourth row creating a diagonal while the beginning edge remains straight. Once all three panels are complete, seam the back panel to the top and straight sides of the front panels. The pattern includes the measurements for how far up to seam on the side, so be sure to check it out or have it handy as you follow along. As I mentioned before, the link to the free pattern is in the description below. So feel free to use whichever method of seaming that you like best. I'll show you here how I seam my ends together using a crochet hook to slip stitch the edge stitches together. Make a slip knot and pull tight over your hook. Then insert the hook into the corner chain spaces of both panels. Grab the long end of the yarn and pull through to attach the yarn with the first slip stitch. Line up the next half double crochet stitches, insert the hook into the tops, and then slip stitch together. Insert the hook into the following chain spaces and then slip stitch these together as well. So we're just going to continue this all the way along until both top panels are attached.
Repeat the same process to seam up the sides. And since the sides just contain the turning chains, you only need to slip stitch the turning chains together, so it's much easier. Make sure that your slip stitches aren't loose on the sides. Because the turning chains are two chain stitches, they're a bit longer. So check that the sides aren't bunching every so often. If they are, loosen up your slip stitches or even alternate one slip stitch in a turning chain followed by two slip stitches in the next turning chain if it's too difficult to keep them loose. It's kind of an art when working with turning chains in my opinion. Once the side is seamed together at the required length, you can begin crocheting the sleeve cuffs without fastening off. All you need to do is half double crochet into the next turning chain space of the top panel and then work your way back around. So you'll be working one half double crochet into each turning chain very loosely so that the sleeves don't bunch up. Again, you may want to check every so often and make sure that you're not working too tightly. And you can go up a hook size to make the stitches looser too. When you reach the end of the round, work the last half double crochet into the last space and then use a slip stitch to join to the first stitch that you made to complete the round. Chain 2 and then half double crochet in the same stitch. half double crochet into the next stitch and all the way around again, joining the rounds with a slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. And then just continue half double crocheting in the round until you have a total of five rounds to complete your sleeve cuff. Okay, we're almost done. The final step is to half double crochet one round around the bottom and the collar edges. We'll begin at the bottom inside corner and then work our way around the bottom of the cardigan until we reach the other corner. Then we'll work around the collar and back to the beginning to fasten off. Attach the yarn with a slip knot and chain two. Then, just like the sleeves, we're going to loosely half double crochet in each chain space all the way around the bottom edge of the cardigan. With the bottom border complete, work three half double crochets into the corner where the collar begins. So we do this to make sure that the corner stays nice and loose and doesn't cinch inwards. Then just half double crochet along the collar edge all the way up and around. Then 
And you can see that after every few stitches, I'm checking to make sure that it lays flat and that I'm not crocheting too tightly. When you get back to the bottom, make three more half double crochets into the corner. And then slip stitch into the first stitch of the border and fasten off. That's it. All you have to do now is weave in your loose ends and steam block your cardigan so that it lays nice and flat. If you enjoyed working on this pattern, I'd love it if you could take a moment to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Your support means so much to me and it really helps my channel expand its reach, allowing me to continue creating helpful tutorials and patterns for you.